All right, let's get into it. When you first look at the MQ-25 Stingray, it kind of just looks like a sleek flying gas tank. So why is the US Navy calling it a revolutionary key to the entire future of air warfare? Well, the answer has a lot less to do with fuel than you'd think, and a whole lot more to do with rewriting the playbook for an aircraft carrier. The Navy's top aviation officer, Vice Admiral Daniel Cheever, he really hits the nail on the head with this one quote, freeing up strike fighters to be strike fighters. That single idea, it explains the immediate problem the MQ-25 is here to solve, but it also gives us a huge hint about a much bigger strategic shift. Let's break down exactly what he's talking about. So to really get why the MQ-25 is such a big deal, you first have to understand the problem. And this is a problem that happens every single day on the deck of a US aircraft carrier. It's all about a super advanced fighter jet being forced to do a job it was never really meant for. Okay, so right now the Navy uses this method called buddy tanking. And it's pretty much what it sounds like. They take one of their top of the line combat jets, the F-A-18 Super Hornet, pull it off the front line and strap a bunch of fuel pods to it. So for that flight, its job isn't to fight, its job is to be a flying gas station for the other jets. And this, as you can imagine, creates a huge trade-off. Every single time an F-A-18 gets sent on a tanker mission, that's one less fighter jet a commander has ready for combat. Plus, it puts a ton of extra wear and tear on these very expensive, very sophisticated airframes. It's kind of like using a Formula One race car to deliver pizzas. I mean, sure it can do it, but what an incredible waste of a high-performance machine. So to fix this problem, the Navy didn't need an even better fighter jet. Nope, it needed a purpose-built solution, a dedicated autonomous vehicle designed for one thing, delivering the one thing every other plane needs, fuel. And that solution, right here, is the MQ-25 Stingray. The MQ-25 is built from the ground up to do one thing exceptionally well. Take that inefficient, burdensome job of refueling away from the fighter jets. And the fact that it's autonomous, that is absolutely critical. An aircraft carrier flight deck is one of the most dangerous places to work on the planet. And this drone is built to handle that chaos without putting a human pilot at risk. And you know, this isn't just some idea on a drawing board. The test version of this drone, the T-1, has already proven it can do the job. It successfully passed fuel mid-air to the Navy's core aircraft, the F-A-18 Super Hornet, the stealthy F-35C Lightning II, and even the E-2D Hawkeye command and control plane. The concept works. Now, it's just about getting it out to the fleet. So how does a game-changing drone like this actually go from being a prototype to an everyday piece of equipment on a warship? Well, the path to the flight deck is very deliberate and it's already well underway. The Navy is taking this step by step. Way back in 2021, they were already doing deck handling tests on the USS George H.W. Bush, basically just figuring out how to taxi this thing around a super crowded flight deck. The first of the actual production models is slated to fly in 2025, and the big goal is to have it fully integrated and testing on a carrier in 2026. And this isn't just about the drone itself. Right? The carriers have to be upgraded to handle it. The USS George H.W. Bush was the first to get the new MD-5E control station, which you can think of as the joysticks and screens that let operators fly the drone from inside the ship. They're also plugging it into JPELs, which is this super precise GPS system that lets the drone land itself perfectly on a moving deck, even if the seas are rough. Now, there is a real-world hiccup we should mention. As of late 2024, the assembly work on the MQ-25 is actually on pause because of a machinist strike at Boeing's facility in St. Louis. It's not totally clear how this might end up affecting the timeline, but it's a good reminder of just how complex the whole industrial machine behind these projects really is. Okay, so what we have is an efficient, automated, flying gas station that frees up our fighter jets. And that, that's a really big deal. But is that the whole story? Is that why top admirals are calling this the key to the future? No, not even close, because the MQ-25's most important mission, it has almost nothing to do with fuel. Its real job is to be the trailblazer, to prove that large, uncrewed aircraft can operate right alongside human pilots from the deck of an aircraft carrier. And this is the quote that changes everything. Vice Admiral Cheever says, the MQ-25 is the key that unlocks manned, unmanned teaming. This is the real mission. The whole refueling job, as important as it is, is just the practical, valuable way for the Navy to learn how to do something much, much more revolutionary. 
Manned Unmanned Teaming It means a future where human pilots are flying missions right alongside autonomous or semi-autonomous drones. The MQ-25 is the test case. By learning how to launch it, recover it, control it, and just integrate this tanker into the chaos, the Navy is literally writing the rulebook for every single uncrewed aircraft that's going to operate from a carrier in the future. Think of the MQ-25 as Chapter 1 in a whole new book on naval aviation. So what does that future actually look like? What happens once that door to manned-unmanned teaming is kicked wide open? Well, it completely changes the recipe for a carrier air wing. This is the vision. You'll have the fighters we have now, the 4th and 5th gen jets like the Super Hornet and the F-35. They'll be joined by the next generation fighter, the FAXX. And flying right alongside all of them, you'll have collaborative combat aircraft, or CCAs, basically autonomous drone wingmen that can carry extra weapons, extra sensors, you name it. And that brings us right back to where we started. This futuristic vision, this mixed fleet of human piloted jets and autonomous wingmen, it's only possible because of the lessons being learned right now with the MQ-25. It's the crucial first piece of the puzzle. It's teaching the Navy how to manage this incredibly complex new aerial ballet. And Vice Admiral Cheever couldn't be more direct about it. This mixed fleet of fourth, fifth, and sixth generation fighters, all teaming up with uncrewed collaborative aircraft, that is the future. It's where everything is headed. So when you really boil it all down, the MQ-25 Stingray is so much more than a tanker. Yeah, its immediate job is to fix a logistics headache and free up fighter jets, but its real legacy, its place in history, will be as the machine that taught the US Navy how to seamlessly blend human pilots and autonomous drones, fundamentally changing air power at sea forever. Which leaves us with a really fascinating question to think about. As these incredibly capable autonomous collaborative combat aircraft become a reality, flying as robotic wingmen, what does that mean for the role, for the skills, and for the very identity of the human fighter pilot?